great. Um, we're very pleased uh, that uh, Dr. Zahab Wanimana was able to join us. Uh, he's Minister of State in charge of transport in the government of Rwanda. And uh, he's clearly working right at the heart of this uh, issue and these ag this agenda. And we have a very clear picture of the opportunities and constraints that are faced uh, for policymakers operating in the real world. So um, I'll hand over to him, but we want to do a Q&A immediately after this, actually, to enable the Minister to participate in that. Um, so do be thinking of questions as we are going along. OK, uh, Minister, you have the floor. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you also for having invited me to participate in this interesting conference. On a climate, uh, on a climate compatible de development in the infrastructure sector, uh, the report here has been done on Rwanda. Me, I am going to talk about the the report about on what the transport is con con concerned, and uh, about the government commitment in developing. Uh, a friend, a climate friendly transport uh, policy. Uh, as you know, we are in a, a crossroad of developing a climate compatible development in the infrastructure sector, transport sector in particular in Rwanda. We fully actually endorse the 2050 transport vision under the proposed national strategy on climate change and low carbon development for Rwanda. The vision aims for a transport system in Rwanda uh, by 2015 that will ensure an efficient, inclusive, integrated transport system which is fully energy secure and resilient to both climate change and increasing demand. This will be achieved by a free, sustainable, multimodal transport system that is based on efficient technology and operational systems, a low cost to entry as possible, based on a fully secure domestic energy supply, socially encompassing the majority of Rwandan and then a robust in terms of adaptation to climate change and the future demand. We also intend to, to have a regionally competitive domestic transportation industry supporting the national economy. Also a sufficient access to capacity in terms of finance, knowledge and governance. I think the report on climate change compatible development in the transport se in the infrastructure sector by ODI provides us an appropriate framework to face three key challenges to formulate and implement climate change policy in the infrastructure sector as follows. First, raising the necessary finance for adapting to and mitigating the effects of climate change. Second, developing and transferring technology. And third, building government capacity. I would like now to elaborate the way forward in implementing a climate compatible development initiative in the transport sector in Rwanda in the light of the policy guidance of the report. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, climate change impacts will affect the transport sector through two main channels. First, new climate conditions will need to be taken into account at every stage of the project cycle for the baseline transport system. And for Rwanda, this would like to include the risk of, an in of increase in flooding and drought, and the role of the transport sector for disaster management mechanism in the country, 
on firefighting, flood, drought, and other crime, climate uh, calamities like landslides, outbreak of diseases like malaria, dengue fever, and pest attack on crop, field, etc. Also, the soil in many parts of Rwanda is acidic, with a pH related to water ranging from 4.5 to 5.5. The effect of climate change on acidity of soils and its subsequent impact on transport infrastructure, which includes bridges, culverts, road, roadside drainage, rigid and stabilized pavement on and the other types of concrete structures. We need to develop an integrated public transport system for our cities by adopting public transport and non-motorized transport priority and car restraining measures to limit, to limit greenhouse gas emission. Out of the total of 13,000, around 13,000 kilometers, among them 4,700 kilometers are, are, are classified road and plus the remaining 8,500 kilometers of unclassified roads. The network of Rwanda has only 1,000 240 kilometers of national roads uh, classified and urban roads, which is paved. With these paved roads represent only around 9.5 of the total road network. In order to reduce vehicle operating costs and emission of greenhouse gas, it is imperative for Rwanda to undertake program for gradually conversion of existing and perfect roads to perfect roads. The higher rainfall and flooding intensity would increase the risk of landslides in this hilly country, having steep slopes and eventually would increase the possibility of road blockages and accidents. The change the climate scenario would cause extended and thicker fog in some parts of the country, which will increase traffic accident in addition to economic loss due to reduced mobility. The air transport of the country would face more disruption in the flight schedule and may require more safety measures due to higher rainfall and thicker fog in the changed climate scenario. The aerodromes of the country with unpaved runways would face serviceability sur problem due to high damages of the runways for extended moisture, moisture saturation in the changed climate and would need upgradation to paved state or increase maintenance activity to keep them serviceable. In short, climate change will result in an overall increase in transport costs as some, some prospective transport options or facilities become unviable. New facilities are constructed to be more resilient operation maintenance and insurance cost increase in some infrastructure required and some infrastructure required retrofitting to withstand climate change impacts. Second, a range of dedicated adaptation infrastructure will require including more weather restraint road pavements. It will also require bridges to withstand increased salinity, humidity, and temperature variation, flood protection, and transport infrastructure for areas suffering drought and saline intrusion. 
Sourcing the funding required to realize the changes described above is a challenge of daunting pro proportions for a developing country like Rwanda. As rightly pointed out in, the, in your report, that north-south financial, financial transfers should take place through the channels of, of as bilateral and multilateral donor flows and the carbon market mechanisms such as the green development mechanism, which allows industrialized, industrialized countries with emission reduction targets to implement emissions reduction projects in developing countries in order to meet those targets. I hope the present gathering will explore more potential and specific international climate funding sources for a developed country, a developing country like Rwanda, which will face a daunting task of mobilizing the required funds on her own. However, I do recognize that the fact that it is imperative to combine international financial support with national policies to encourage climate-friendly and resilient domestic investment in order to mobilize change on the scale required. I can assure you on behalf of the government of Rwanda that we are actively cons considering mobilizing domestic funds for tackling climate cha cha change challenges. A number of initiatives are, are under consideration here in Rwanda. Notable among them are charging a penalizing emission generating, generating vehicles, pricing carbon, regulating for energy efficient, efficiency, and then revise the zone planning and the building codes that take into account the new climate conditions. Again, the analysis is in this report suggests that donor climate-related infrastructure funding may be excessively skewed towards mitigation at the cost of adaptation and that mitigation funding may be excessively skewed towards the energy sector at the cost of the other building sector such as transport sector. Efforts should be therefore be taken to reduce the gap in funding between energy and other infrastructure development sectors. I would also like to draw your attention to the fact that the climate change may also offer some opportunities as well, as it has been pointed out by the first presenter. Some of the potential opportunities are as follows. The increase in rainfall would facilitate some sections of a few rivers like our Akagera River to become navigable over an extended period and thus enhance the prospect for the development of water transport system in Rwanda. The erosion on hills would leave more gravel and sand deposits on the stream's beds which will available, which if available, may be contribute to the construction to the construction of roads and other infrastructures. In addition, climate change has also created other developmental opportunities in the transport sector, including access to new sources of finance, potential for green job creation and profiting from synergies between climate change initiatives and the develop development priorities. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we know that technological progress plays a crucial role in reducing carbon emission from the transport sector. While less critical for adaptation, protecting communities from the impacts of climate change will also require technological innovation. Considering the existing low industrial, industrial and research base, it would be almost impossible for Rwanda to develop leapfrogging polluting technologies without, without active support of donors and international organizations. However, international initiatives alone will not be enough to achieve technology transfer on the scale and within the time scale required. As like other developing countries, Rwanda is limited in her capacity to absorb new technologies. In this connection, efforts should be taken to adopt labor intensive and low carbon technologies. Notable among them are labor intensive systems such as promotion of bicycles and working as low, as low cost options for increasing mobility. Improvements to the current international combi combi combustion engine fleet and then application of integrated transport demand and supply management approach such as car restraint and public transport and encouraging the non-motorized transport incentive policy measures. We would also encourage the promotion of the use of, of biofuels, etc. And then to note that the report highlighted the key capacity barriers faced by the developing country governments in successfully meeting the challenge of climate change in the infrastructure sector. With the weak industrial and institutional capacity, Rwanda is also not an exception. The scale and the urgency of, of the climate change challenge demands Uh, uh, the scale and the urgency of the climate challenge, uh, change challenge demands an ambitious, an ambitious response. However, a developing country like Rwanda can only take actions that are consistent with their capacity level. This is difficult to achieve in many developing countries due to institutional weakness weakness, poor access to information and modeling, low levels of human capacity and inadequate financial resources. Climate change policy development is uniquely challenging because the issue spans across multiple sectors and scales and so requires extensive, co extensive coordination between government agencies that normally work in, in silos. Building the capacity of developing, uh, developing companies, the countries and their governments to formulate and implement climate change policy will therefore form an important part of programs to support developing countries in meeting the challenge of climate change. The proposed transport vision 2050 in response to climate change envisaged as the long-term development strategy for Rwanda assigns fundamental importance to the development of the economic infrastructure of the country, and in particular, in particular, transportation infrastructure. However, 
it is crucial for achieving Vision 2050 will be to link human resource development proper, properly with the, sec the other sector developments and first to assist in establishing a knowledge-based economy. With the most acute deficiency being apparent in the fields of applied and natural sciences, economics and engineering, Rwanda lags behind in terms of professional skills and training. Although it is expected that the country will continue to rely on imported technology from advanced countries to face climate change challenges, we, we, we are trained specialized nationals will be essential to run as well as maintain technological systems ranging from medicine, medicine, agriculture, telecommunications, industries, and other service sectors for effectively managing the impact of the climate change. Uh, Again, in Rwanda, up now, please, Minister, as we have a number of other speakers who, who need to speak. Just, uh, yes. Please, perhaps. Okay. The, uh, again, in Rwanda, the rate of, of adoption and integration of science and technology in socio-economic life is still low, and the shortage of technologically, technically qualified professional is visible at all levels. Support from high-income income countries is critical in building capacity. Donors are well positioned to work through existing channels of development, assistance to build capacity for integrated climate change into the developmental decision. Ladies and gentlemen, there is simply no alternative to facing up the inevitable changes that lie Ahead, climate change is already altering the face of the planet. We live on. We, as the key players in transport, hold our future and those of our children. Before I end, I would like to take this opportunity to convey my greetings for giving me the opportunity to contribute in your climate change initiative. I wish you a very success in developing, in developing sustainable solutions for climate change compatible transport sector development initiatives for Rwanda. Thank you all.